before we take a closer look at this plant, I wanted to share with you a quick announcement. If you have had interest in finding out more about the variety of edible and medicinal plants that have appeared on the YouTube channel in the past or will appear in the future, I would encourage you please to subscribe to my Substack. I'm going to have a lot of great bonus material in there that I think will be of great interest to you. This series is going to focus on a plant known as the prairie turnip, also known by the name Indian breadroot and sometimes referred to by the name white apple. Lewis also provided a more detailed description of the edible part of this plant, the root. He mentioned that the root is covered by a rough, black, thin, and tough rind. And of course this part is not edible. You have to actually peel away this rind, as he described it, in order to get to the edible part of this root. So. There's actually a more efficient way of doing this. It's mentioned in the ethnobotanic record that Native American women would actually use their teeth to help separate the rind from the rest of the plant, which I'll try right now, actually. You'll see once you remove that rough, black, thin, and tough rind, what you're left with is a very white and moist tuber. In Lewis's botanic record, he refers to this as the white apple, and that is based off of the French engagee term for this plant. They actually refer to this as the white apple or the prairie apple. And uh, of course it's not an apple, it's not even in the same taxonomic family as the apple is, which is in the rose family. This is actually in the pea family. We're going to be taking a look at some additional descriptions of this plant so that you can be more certain of your plant identification. Lewis went on to provide a more detailed description of the edible part of this root. He described it as a fine white substance, somewhat porous, spongy, and moist, and rather tough before it is dressed. He mentioned that the bulk of the root is penetrated down the middle with a small tough rind. So you can actually see that here. And this actually extends up into the center and throughout the entirety of the root. I also wanted to take a moment and talk about a modern day taxonomic reference to this plant because there are some other identifying characteristics of this plant that would be really good to know. Specifically you will notice that this plant has a fluorescence or flowers along a raceme. So the individual flowers in this particular instance are in a dense cluster along the main axis or stem of the flower. Um, this flower stem is called a peduncle and again this is in a raceme form. I also need to mention something about the plant family to which this belongs. You will notice that the individual flowers show the typical pattern of the P family or Fabiaceae family. You'll notice that each individual flower has the stereotypical banner wings and keel that we use to identify a plant in the P family. The taxonomy guide also mentions that each individual flower is bluish purple, but as it gets further in its growing cycle, it ages to a tawny color or a yellowish color like you see here. A couple more identifying characteristics for prairie turnip is you will notice on the upper part of the leaves it is glabrous, which means it is not hairy. So you'll notice on each of the leaflets it is very smooth or not hairy. If you look at the margins or edges of the leaves, you'll notice that a silvery colored hair begins to appear. Just as important is the underside of the leaves where you'll notice an abundance of silver colored hairs that run the entirety of each of the leaflets.
I had already mentioned that this plant is known by the common name prairie turnip or Indian breadroot. It also goes by the Latin name Pediomelum escalentum. Anyway, this is a really important plant to know about. If you're curious about the ecology of the Great Plains or you're um, curious about history or ethnobotany or a wide variety of subjects, this plant had an extensive range across the Great Plains. I mean, it grew over a significant part of the North American continent. Um, it stretched all the way from the eastern slope of the Rocky Mountains, east um, through Kansas, Nebraska, North Dakota, South Dakota, um, Wisconsin, and a number of other states as well. You might also be wondering when to harvest this plant. You can find this plant growing any time between May and July. It kind of depends on the latitude and the elevation you find yourself at. And as far as elevation is concerned, you'll find it growing somewhere between 3,500 feet and 6,000 feet. I also wanted to mention something about doing your own research when you are curious about identifying plants that are used for food or medicine. It is extremely important that you be absolutely certain of the plant you are identifying and that you are potentially using. Please do not only rely on this video for identification purposes. This video does not address all of the defining characteristics of any particular plant. There are a number of other plants that look similar to prairie turnip, and it is important that you know the difference between this edible plant and other plants that have toxic compounds that could be somewhat poisonous to you. No plant video would be complete without mentioning the importance of harvesting ethic. It is essential that we preserve these plant communities for the future so that we can continue to enjoy their aesthetic beauty, but also continue to enjoy any uh, benefits they provide with regards to nutrition or for medicinal purposes. Thanks for joining us. Please stay tuned. There will be more videos in this series about the prairie turnip.